Hello everyone, my name is Laura and you're watching the Bean Bird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. And today I want this video to be an encouragement to believers. I want to inspire believers. I want to encourage us to live lives of excellence, but I do not want anything that I say to make any of you feel shamed or not good enough uh, because that's that's not the, the purpose of this at all. And I want to read from Second Peter today. And I found this incredibly encouraging to myself. And I'm hoping that it's going to be an encouragement to you as well. Which is why I'm sharing it. And it's just kind of a motivation for us to, you know, keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on long plans that we're headed for heaven. That, you know, we're God's children and he loves us. And we want to make the most of the time that we have here. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We are not saved by our works. But we should have a fruitful life. We should maximize our efforts while we're here. And that is the heart of what I want to share today. So I kind of wanted to set that up. That this is for the body of believers. People who have already accepted Jesus as their Savior. We have accepted that gift. We are saved. We are in God's hand. And we want to live lives of total dedication. We want to maximize our efforts. We want to be more disciplined. Um, we want to have a high energy for God's kingdom that we are, um, you know, striving in the race that God has set before us, that we are um, confident in the fruit that the Lord is doing in us. And... Um, yeah, so I want that to be an encouragement and kind of inspire us to keep going and um, not to create shame and, and not saying that we earn any anything, but, um, but that we want to do well. And I want to do well. And so um, we want to grow our self-control, perseverance, godliness, affections for people and uh, brother, sister, love of humanity. Uh, we want to be productive. And we want to see God's nature in our lives. We want to see the fruit shining from us. We want to um, live lives that are faithful and fruitful. And so with all that said, in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, uh, Peter is believed to be the author of this. And he's addressing a body of believers about growth in, in Christian virtue. And... Um, so I'm going to read from that. So just this little bit here from verse 1 to 15. Um, stay with me there and then I'll, we'll talk about it. But Simon Peter, a bondservant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received faith of the same kind as ours, by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted us everything pertaining to life and godliness, through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For these, he has granted us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. There we're seeing, you know, everything that God has called us to, everything that God has saved us from, and God wants good things for us, and he wants to give us a great hope and a great future um, now, continuing on. Now, for this very reason, also applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindnesses, and in your brotherly kindnesses, love. For these qualities are yours and are increasing. They render your you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in his way, the entrance into eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will abundantly supply to you. Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present with you. 
I consider it right as long as I am in this earthly dwelling to stir up in you by way of reminder, knowing that the laying aside of my earthly dwelling is imminent, as also our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will also be diligent that at any time after my departure, you also, you, I'm sorry, after my departure, you will be able to call these things to mind. And I really want to talk about verse eight for it, where it says, for if these qualities are yours and you are increasing, they are rendering you neither useless nor unfruitful to the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we're focused on the long term things. We're focused on the things of God and we are not useless. We are not unfruitful because we're attached to the vine and that vine is Jesus Christ. And while we're attached to him, Jesus is going to make that fruit bud in your life and it's going to be a beautiful thing. You know, yesterday I was talking about the gift and that the value of the gift is in what it costs you. And I talked about how the gift that God gave us of his son cost him everything. And that makes it really valuable. I think a lot of times when we think of what something costs, we want to attribute a dollar value to it, a monetary value. But there's a cost to things that go beyond what it costs financially in money, but what it costs in proportion to what sacrifice you made to accomplish that thing. You know, if you're knitting a baby blanket for a friend, it's all that time and energy that goes into knitting that blanket that makes it extra special. We saw with the widow, she gave the two copper coins and that was all she had and that made it a lot, a big gift, even though the value monetarily was small. And um, we wanna make sure that we are giving the Lord our good gifts. I'm not saying we're saved by works, not at all, but we wanna be living lives of excellence. We want to try to be more fruitful because that's the goal. And I say that to, to inspire and encourage us to just, you know, keep on the race. And, um, you know, I think about gift giving and the worst gift that I ever heard of in my life was someone who received um, a wrapped present and when they opened the present, it was um, one of those um, entertainment coupon books that is good for a year. And it was already nine months into that year when they received the gift. And then when they opened the gift, it was missing. Um, all the good coupons had been removed from it. And I thought, what an odd gift, right? Was this an accident? Was this a mistake? Like, how did this happen? Was I don't really know. It seemed to me like, you know, something you would give as like a passive aggressive gesture. But any, anyway, the point that I want to make is that we don't want to give God gifts that reflect that half-hearted giving, right? Oh, I got to give something. I have this thing here on the table. Let's just give that to, to God. You know, God loves when we give our all, when we give with excellence, when we, um, when we give all of us. I mean, it's been said that, you know, serving the Lord will cost you everything. And truly, when we surrender our human lives and we live a life of sacrifice, the Lord turns it around and blesses us because he's good. And we might feel like we're giving everything to God. But the thing is, when we give him everything, we're allowing God to operate in our life more fully, which actually ends up blessing us more. So we should give God everything is what I want to encourage in that story. Because um, there's, there's a hesitance and a fear of letting go of certain things in our life that we maybe hold on to as comfort items or safety items. But when we can really give those things to God and say, I'm giving it all to you. And we give our best gifts to the Lord, our best worship to the Lord, our best service to the Lord. Um, it makes God happy because of course we're praising him and our gift to him, but also it does bless us. Not saying that our motivation should be um, selfish gain, but God is just so good that he just turns it around and we end up getting blessed by us trying to bless him. You know, you can't outgive God. And, um, you know, I found that anything that I've been holding on to or afraid of letting go, when I finally just say, you know what, you can have it all. It ends up being 
so much better. And we end up living lives where we feel more confident um, because we see the fruit of the Lord in our life. And when we see the fruit of the Lord in our life, it helps give us the confidence and the assurances that we are walking with the Lord, that we are under his wing. Now, sometimes bad things happen when you're doing everything right. And that doesn't necessarily mean an indication that you're doing things wrong if things are not working out for you in a current season. Sometimes it's just a testing period and we go through those times. But when we go through those times, the Lord is with us. And if you go through a period where you feel like God is being kind of silent or quiet, um, you know, pray through those times. Don't give up. God will never, you know, take you out of his hand. He's not going to abandon you and he's not going to be looking on you with shame. The Lord doesn't remember your sins and hold them over your head. He's not looking to um, condemn you or shame you. And any shame or fear or doubt, um, these are from the enemy. And he uses these things to make us give up, to make us be sad and in despair and not want to get up out of bed in the morning. That's tactics of the enemy. We have to see that as warfare that's coming against us from the enemy. But that God is good. He's never going to leave us. And he wants good things for us. And he wants to bless us. And when we can give our maximum effort because we are giving out of the overflow of the abundance of our joy that we experience by walking in the Lord, we want to give God all the praise. We want to give God all of our gifts that we can give to him. And we want to do our best effort and um, not give God leftovers or um, half-hearted, you know, efforts. So um, I hope that that's encouraging. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say in this. I, I was kind of hoping I could communicate it the right way, um, what was on my mind and what I was thinking about. But I think it's an encouragement to me to think that sometimes I feel like, you know, I just feel like, I don't know, am, am I doing this right? Am I, am I saying the right things? Am I doing a good job? Am I, am I living my life right? And then I read verses like this and it encourages me that, you know, these things that, like, it's not in vain. The, the Lord is with us. His fruit is there. And, you know, we might not see the benefits or the effects of the seeds that are planted, the seeds that we take part in planting for the Lord, but those things are going to reap a harvest and God is going to do the other parts of the growth process God is going to water the seed and bring in another worker to fulfill the calling on, you know, people's lives that we, you know, talk to. We might talk to somebody once and then another person comes and talks to them. And so God is doing something. And what we want to do is just make sure that we are a part of that plan. I mean, he wants us to be part of the plan, but what I mean is that we're actively participating and that we're excited and confident and happy um, in our service in the Lord and he wants us to be joyful in the service of the Lord and to give with a joyful heart not with a reluctant heart and um, the Lord has blessed us so much and so it's natural for us to want to give back to him because what he has given us is so great and we don't give to him because we have to but because we want to out of the overflowing of the abundance of joy that he's placed within our hearts so May the Lord bless you and keep you and his face shine upon you. And I will see you all tomorrow.